Many problems in chemistry can be lumped under the big category of stoichiometry problems. So let's take a look at how to approach those problems and approach them in a systematic and consistent way. So what is stoichiometry? Well, stoichiometry um, refers to anything that um, is exploring the relationship between different components in a chemical reaction. And those components can be anything, whether they're reactants or products or heat that's consumed or generated. Um, the word stoichiometry, kind of an oddball looking word, comes from a, a mashup of Greek and English roots that mean element measurement. So when we're doing a stoichiometry problem, we are measuring elements. What types of problems can we approach as stoichiometry problems? Well, anytime we're given or we know the amount of either a reactant or a product, we can use a stoichiometry approach to determine the amount of any other reactant or product in the process. So a few places where you'll run into these types of problems uh, with specific names is if we're looking at a theoretical yield or a limiting reactant type of problem. Uh, these are also titrations, are types of stoichiometry problems, and percent yield problems are uh, pretty basic stoichiometry problems as well. When you're approaching a stoichiometry problem, approach them all the same way. They all have the same four steps. Those steps are write a balanced chemical equation, find moles of something that you know, use the mole to mole relationship in the balanced equation to change moles of what you know to moles of what you're looking for, and then change those moles of what you're looking for into whatever the problem is asking for, whether it's grams or milliliters or concentration or heat. So let's start with that balanced equation. Um, balanced equations have different level of detail depending what you need in a problem. Um, for a reaction planning type of situation, we might not even need to know the products of the reaction. All we would need to know is reactants. Um, I mentioned heat. We can approach many heat problems as stoichiometry problems, but if we don't need heat, then we probably don't need to know delta H for the reaction um, in order to balance that chemical equation. And another thing, you know, net ionic equations in many cases are plenty of information to do our problem. Remember, net ionic equations are only describing the actual chemistry that's taking place in the problem. There are so many ways to find moles, um, and you know, you know many of them, and you, you'll know many more. Uh, you can start with grams, or volume, or heat, or pressure, or lots of other things to get to moles. But in every stoichiometry problem, you need to get to moles of something so start looking for these things. Start looking for grams. Start looking for the other information that will let you get moles of what you know. Now we get to the heart. The heart of every stoichiometry problem is the mole-to-mole -mole conversion that takes place uh, right in the middle. Um, and unfortunately, this is one that people sometimes just skip over because it seems trivial. Um, many reactions have one-to-one -one uh, relationships between moles of reactants and products. So people tend to skip those, but don't ever skip this step. Don't ever skip writing out this step explicitly because it's going to help you so much in keeping track of problems when they get a little bit more complex um, going down the road. And finally, finding the quantity of interest. This is just the opposite of getting into moles. Now we've got to get out of moles um, and get to what we're looking for. Stoichiometry requires practice and recognizing some of these into and out of mole um, steps takes 
practice. So make sure you're taking advantage of opportunities to practice those. With that in mind, let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, first of all, we might run into a problem like this. Nitrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form nitrogen dioxide. If 15.263 grams of nitrogen gas reacts completely, how many grams of nitrogen dioxide gas are formed? So as far as problem types, this would be a theoretical yield problem type. If we react all of this reactant, how many grams of product can we form? So I said it's a stoichiometry problem. Let's approach it like a stoichiometry problem. Step one, write that balanced chemical equation. So nitrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form NO2. Balancing that equation out, we've got a couple of twos pop up here. And remember, nitrogen and oxygen are both diatomic uh, elements. Make sure you look over your diatomic elements and remember them when you're writing chemical equations. Step two, find known moles. Well, the only numerical information we have in this whole problem is the grams of nitrogen. So that must be what we need to find moles of. So I've got that many grams of nitrogen. I've got the molar mass of N2. Um, I got that calculated off the periodic table. And that gives me my moles of N2. As I note here, I've got way too many sig figs, but I'm in the middle of a problem. So when I'm in the middle of a problem, I always carry extra sig figs. I'll round that off at the end. Also, always make sure that you're keeping track of units and canceling units appropriately. That's going to help you keep track of these problems and um, keep all of your fractions flipped in the right direction. All right, step three. Now that I've got moles of what I know, let's go to moles of what I want. Uh, we want nitrogen dioxide, so I've got moles of nitrogen. From the balanced equation, I know that every one mole of nitrogen forms two moles of NO2. Of NO2. Um, so there we go. Again, if I keep track of moles, if I keep track of units and canceling units, that's going to make sure that I put this as 2 over 1 instead of 1 over 2. So the units help you set this up. Last step in every stoichiometry problem, get to whatever our answer is. The problem specifically asks how many grams of nitrogen dioxide. So let's do that moles to gram conversion. That many moles. Again, I got this off of the periodic table, uh, adding up the formula mass. Make sure that your units cancel appropriately so that it's 46.05 over 1 and not 1 over 46.05. That gets me to my answer. So now I've rounded to 5 sig figs, which is uh, how many are appropriate for, for this problem. Whenever possible, also take a look at reasonable answers or take a look at what you expect to be a reasonable answer. I'm starting with 15 grams of nitrogen. All of that nitrogen plus two oxygens are going into product. So I should probably have something that's a little more than three times the mass of nitrogen coming out. And sure enough, 50 is a little bit more than three times 15. So that's a reasonable answer. How about another problem? Another example, uh, 25 milliliters of an unknown magnesium hydroxide solution is titrated to the equivalence point with 29.71 milliliters of 0 0.1302 molar nitric acid. What is the concentration of the unknown magnesium hydroxide solution? This is a titration problem. Um, Titration problems are stoichiometry problems. So they've got some specific uh, vocabulary associ associated with them, you know, titrated and equivalence point. That just means that we've completely reacted. Um, and titrations are often used to determine concentrations. So let's dive into this one. Step one, balance chemical equation. Magnesium hydroxide reacts with nitric acid to form water and magnesium nitrate. 
I balance this out with two nitric acids forming two waters. This reaction type is a neutralization reaction. Step two, let's find those known moles. Now I've got a few more numbers in here, but if we look at what numbers we have, 25 milliliters of unknown, so we can't do much there, 29 milliliters of unknown concentration. So I can figure out moles of nitric acid. I did the milliliters to liters conversion in my head here. Um, and volume and concentration will give me moles that I'm looking for. Again, always watch your units and cancel them so that you know that your units are working out correctly. Step three, we're going to known moles, from known moles to moles of interest. Again, using the relationship in the balanced chemical equation. So my moles of nitric acid times one mole of magnesium hydroxide over two moles of nitric acid gives me what I'm looking for in this step. Again, make sure you pay attention and cancel those units. That's what tells you that this is one over two and not two over one. And finally, getting to uh, the answer that we're looking for, this concentration. So molarity of magnesium hydroxide is equal to moles of magnesium hydroxide over liters of magnesium hydroxide solution. I have that many moles of magnesium hydroxide. And from the original problem, I have 25 milliliters of that solution. So 0 0.025 liters gets me to the concentration that I'm looking for. So again, stoichiometry problems pop up in a lot of different cases, a lot of different situations. And if you approach them all with the same consistent four-step approach, you'll have a much better chance of being successful in, in solving these problems rather than trying to make every problem type its own separate thing. Think about all these problems and how they re relate to stoichiometry. Follow the four steps, balanced equation, finding moles of what you know, converting moles from what you know to what you're looking for, and then getting back out of moles. Good luck on these type of problems. Make sure you practice, and I'll see you next time.